Find me the core of the castle in the tower. And what's the plan for attacking the west wall? First, we have to get men to the wall with ladders, which is no easy matter under fire, so we'll need as many men covering them as possible. As soon as the ladders are in place, our foot soldiers will run up and try to scale the wall. Once a few of them get to the battlements, we should quickly gain the upper hand. How will we take the battlements? Either by scaling the west wall, or our men at the gate will help. If they can break through, that is. And the inner bailey? That will be tough. Even if we get through the gate and into the outer bailey, we're still a long way from victory. The castle is designed so we'll be like hens in a coop to anyone with a bow on the inner battlements. We'll have to either fight our way through, or somehow get around them. What about the living quarters? There, I'm worried most about the hostages. Once we're inside, Istvan will know defeat is inevitable, but we'll still have to fight for each and every room. How are we going to attack the gate? We'll try to do as much damage as we can with the trebuchet first. Kieser claims he can even hit it directly. Even if that's true, we'll have to charge through a downpour of enemy arrows all the way to the portcullis. Portcullis? Fortunately, it's wooden, so we'll be able to break it down. But dealing with the defense in the bailey won't be easy. I think I've heard everything I need to know. Do you want to join the attack on the walls or on the gate? Remember, many of the Scalitz men will follow you. It could make a big difference. I'll help with the attack on the walls. I'm proud of you, Henry. You've changed from an insolent pup into a tough, reliable fighter. And as God is my witness, we will kick those whore sons' arses. A village lad and an old soldier? <laughs> this man must be shaking in his boots. <laughs> if he's not shaking, then he doesn't know what he's got coming. Just one last thing, though. No matter how good the plan is, something always gets fucked up. Keep your eyes open and take advantage of every chance. Help your comrades and don't go rushing in where you're outnumbered. We have to take the castle gradually, one position after another. I'll remember that. Good luck to you, stripling. Good luck to you, old soldier. Good luck, then.
Van Toth can worm his way out of this one. Don't tempt fate, Hamish. Ishvan! It's over! You want us to come and get you? I wouldn't advise that. Your friend Divish wants to see his wife alive again. And Sir Radzik? Are both hostages unharmed? For now, Hanush, unless circumstances change. Well, I'm glad to hear it. My guest is also safe and sound, but he's also quite keen to go home. I imagine you feel the same way. It's been a long time since you warmed yourself at your own hearth. I'm in no hurry. I've plenty of supplies here. Grand view and excellent company. What more could I want? Your freedom! Freedom? Freedom to get an arrow in the back. Sir, you're all noblemen here. All bound by honor. I give you my word as a knight and lord, and that of my companions. If you release Lady Stephanie and Sir Radzig, you may leave the castle with your men and go on your way unharmed. And just how far will we get? What good will it do me if your men attack us in the woods instead of here? If you give me your word of honor that you will leave and never return, I promise you safe passage to the boundary of this fiefdom. What happens after that is up to you and the will of God Almighty. Very well then, but I want a small safeguard. I'll give you her ladyship, but Radzig comes with me. I'll release him in scullets. Out of the question! Is our word not good enough for you? Is mine not good enough for you? I swear I'll release him when I get to a safe distance. I'll go with him, Hanush. Let the Lady Stephanie have her freedom now. Father! Don't worry, son. I trust Lord Toth's self-interest more than his word. He wouldn't be fool enough to harm me. If you're certain, Radzig, prepare horses and supplies and tell your men to pull back. We'll come down. You heard him. Get to work. And any man who breaks his truce answers to me. So are you really going to let them go? My word is my bond, Henry. He's a cutthroat and a liar. Good men are dead because of him. What's to stop us from skewering him as soon as he sets foot outside? Our honor. If you let him go, he'll do the same again. Or worse, God's justice will find him. Then, we'll get a taste of my mace. If we break our word of honor, we have none. And without honor, we are nothing. Never fear. Your father will be all right. We'll hunt down those vermin yet. Bring the horses. Here she is, as I promised. Not a hair on her head harmed. Divish. <laughs> Stephanie. Forgive me, husband. I'm sorry. For what? For letting them into the castle. Oh, come now, my dear. You're not to blame. I didn't know who he was. He said he was your friend. Never mind. Did he hurt you? No. I hope your word can be trusted. Certainly more than yours. If everything goes as agreed, I'll set Radzik free in Scalitz. If anyone tries to follow us, I'll kill him. We won't. My apologies. 
apologies for keeping you from your father, but you'll see each other soon enough. Oh, I almost forgot. Your sword. I expect you'll want it back after all the trouble you went to. Actually, you know what? I think I'll keep it. As a memento. This isn't over. I'll find you. I look forward to it. Yeah! Quick! To the battlements! We have to see which way they go! Oh, they really are heading for Scallets! Mount up, Henry! You've heard what he'll do if we follow them. We're not going to follow them. We just have to collect your father. Or do you want him to walk back here when they release him? about it. I just felt I had to do it. What will you do now? Not long ago I only made plans three days ahead at most. Maybe I really could do something for Rate and its people. Something really big. But there'll be plenty of time for that later. What should I say to him? Don't worry. It'll come to you. You'll see. Well, I just hope he'll be there. Alive. This is quite a turnaround, isn't it? What do you mean? How long have we known each other? A few weeks? Something like that. Before that, I was chasing wenches around Rate and you were digging turnips. And now look at us. A pair of veterans. Uh, I was an apprentice blacksmith, not a turnip digger. Same difference, you silly bugger. sign of them. Move on. There. I'm glad to see Ishban kept his word, sir. Not half as glad as I am, Your Grace. Well, we kept our word too. And now Toth has had his head start and he's fair game. Which way do they go? To the north, but I would be careful, Sir Hans. Fear not, Your Grace. I have twice as many men as he. Well, I won't keep you any longer. I'm sure the two of you have a lot to say to each other. Let's go! treated me quite decently, although they did steal my horse, so I'll have to go back on foot. It looks like it's all over. Not by a long shot. 
It won't be over until we get this mess cleared up. Catch that bastard. How could we let him go? Would you rather we killed him? Even if it meant Lady Stephanie and I died too? No, of course not. But what was to stop us from killing him after the exchange? Honour? Honour? If the word of honour of a nobleman could not be trusted, then he would never have agreed to the exchange. Where's the honour in abandoning your son? Hmm. You know how it is. We were young. It happened. And I couldn't marry a commoner. Then your father, I mean Martin, came along and took care of both of you. Well, he knew it. What? That I was your father? Certainly. He was a great man. He took you as his own. And I always kept an eye on you. Of that you can be sure. I know so little about his past. He told you nothing. Oddly enough, even though you don't have his blood, you're very like him. When he was around your age, he became bored of his trade and set out to see the world. He lived through many adventures, even fought in a war. In a war? Yes, in Poland, I believe. And I don't think he cared much for it. That's why he wanted me to stay at home. He spent some time in Prague, then settled in Kuttenberg. But it seems he quarrelled with someone there and finally ended up here. You know the rest. I loved him, but even so, I, I somehow always had a feeling I didn't quite fit in. It was in your blood, I suppose. <laughs> I lost the one thing I had left from him. Your sword. Ah. The sword. It's not my sword. It's yours. For a moment there, it was so near, yet so far. Oh well, it can't be helped. It was almost within my grasp, but... Just then I had something else on my mind. Well, I think we may yet have a chance to get it back. This business with Toth is not yet over, unfortunately. Well, that's a chance I'd welcome. Not just to get the sword, but that bastard Istvan too. And then I'll find that German whore son who torched Scalitz, and I'll slay him with it. I'll never forget his face. Or his name. Mark Vart von Aulitz. Those are noble intentions, son. But don't forget there are other things in this world that are worth living for. Like what? Look around you. Blue skies overhead, green grass underfoot, beautiful girls. Good wine. A few good friends and a fine steed under your backside. Those are things worth living for. Though I can't deny that swine who killed your mother must pay for what he did. But it's better not to dwell too much on that at the cost of those other things. On the subject of steeds, I think we'll have to ride like the Knights Templar. How's that? Two up. One day I'll tell you how they got their seal. You can take the front. It's like I always imagined it would be, teaching my boy to ride. Although it would be better if you were a little smaller. My word, it's all go today, isn't it? I wonder who this is. I think I know. It's Margrave Jobst. The king's cousin? I wonder what he wants. I guess we'll find out soon enough.
beside you. That doesn't matter now. I miss you and my. I miss you very much. You'll be fine. We're proud of you. For what? I let you down. I lost the sword. I let that bastard get away. Don't be so hard on yourself. There was nothing you could have done to save us. And someone has to live and carry the torch. That's for the sword. It's just a thing. Fighting. Now look at me. Standing up to evil isn't the same as sowing your seeds. You did what was right. I have to leave you now. No, I can't stay. Will I ever see you again? God knows. you and it's well past dawn. Sir Radzik wants you at the upper castle. The lords are in council with Yobbs. Right. I'll go straight away. What is it? It's just... I don't know how to address you anymore. All of a sudden you're Sir Radzik's son, hobnobbing with lords and ladies. And here's me, as common as muck. Oh, give over, you idiot. Do I look like a lord to you? Not really. You're as much a lord as I am a nun. And I've never looked good in a habit. Get out of here! <laughs> or I'll have you clapped in the stocks. Are you going to the meeting with Margrave Jobst as well? I am. What about Istvan? I assume that we didn't catch him? No. Because if we had, you'd be the first one to know. Have no fear. We'll get him eventually. I hope you're right. Anyway, let's go and see what Jobst wants from us. My lords, Christ's blessings on you all. And on you, Lord Capon. And this is my son, Henry. I didn't know you had a son, Sir Redzig. It came as a bit of a surprise to young Henry, too. <laughs> 
This gentleman here is John II of Liechtenstein, a member of my council. I'm honored, gentlemen. Come join us. Our grave Jobs was just about to tell us the reason for his visit. Your Grace. I'm sure we're all agreed, Your Graces, that all this unrest must come to an end. This kingdom needs a king. Question is, which king? My cousin, Wenceslas IV, who is being held in captivity. I have to confess, my lord, that your answer surprises me a little. If I'm correctly informed until recently, you sided with your other cousin, Sigismund. That I cannot deny, and I have always stated my position plainly. But times have changed. How they changed, your grace. Sir, there is one thing on which we undoubtedly concur. That King Wenceslas, unfortunately, did not inherit his father's gift for governing. Sadly, his failures have cost Bohemia, the nobles, and our whole Luxembourg family a great deal of money and effort. How did the king let it go so far, damn it? It's in his temperament. He cares only for wine, women, and the hunt. A king, in fact, who never wanted to be king. Then why didn't he just let his brother have the crown? Young sir, the crown weighs heavy when there are duties to be performed. But to surrender it means giving up great privileges, too. But he did surrender power to his brother. When things started getting out of hand, Wenceslas appealed to Sigismund for help in restoring order. What you're saying, Wenceslas has invited him here? This is starting to make my head spin. Actually, it makes sense when you think about it. Sigismund wanted to re-establish the power of the whole House of Luxembourg. He thought if he helped Wenceslas win the Imperial Crown, in return his brother would help him become the King of the Romans and leave the actual reign of Bohemia and the Empire to him. Sigismund would govern while Wenceslas could carry on doing what he was best at, enjoying the life of the Imperial Court. Why wasn't Wenceslas crowned Holy Roman Emperor long ago? He was already elected King of the Romans. All he had to do was go and let the Pope put the damn Imperial Crown on his head. Who knows? Maybe he'd prefer hunting and consorting with bathhouse wenches to spending time with the Pope. Well, so would I, I must admit. <laughs> Sigismund's plan seemed sound enough, but it didn't quite work out, did it? It worked for a while. He and his brother reached an agreement. Sigismund took over administration of the kingdom and began planning Wenceslas's journey to Rome for the imperial coronation. But then Wenceslas realized he would just be a puppet with a crown. I must say, Margrave Jobst. Wenceslas and Prokhov behave rather like naughty children in need of a good clout about the ears. Sigismund would agree. He was already planning his rule of Bohemia, and all of a sudden, the rug was pulled from under him. I'd say he lost his patience and decided he'd drag Wenceslas to the coronation, kicking and screaming if he had to. Just like a naughty child, as you say. So he abducted him and your brother Prokhov too, if I heard correctly. Correct. And you helped him do it, if I heard correctly. Yes, your graces, it's true. I was there when Sigismund abducted Prokop. I thought everything could somehow be settled, that we could make my brother see sense. But Sigismund just wanted to put an end to the dispute once and for all, whatever the cost. There was nothing I could do to stop him. And that's one of the reasons why I'm here. Ah. The worst of it is that it was all for nothing. Instead of putting a stop to the revolt, it escalated it, and the result is this chaos we have today. That's true enough, sir. But I must admit now, I'm not sure what your position is. The king is incompetent, but we must protect him. The simple truth, gentlemen, is that for all of Wenceslas's faults, we have no one else. So we'll have to make do with his idleness. Ugh. People like him, though. <laughs> but what can we do now? Sigismund has the League of Lords behind him. Otto von Bergolf, Heinrich von Rosenberg... The situation has gotten completely out of control. Now even the nobles of the League of Lords are realizing that Sigismund wasn't the right choice. 
so now Burgoff is on your side. Are we to assemble an army together with him and face Sigismund on the field of battle? We're not in Hungary now. Such affairs may be settled elegantly, without unnecessary hostilities or expenses. I have negotiated an alliance with the Hungarian bishops, the Polish, and of course the Czech nobility, against Sigismund. Every day he is losing the ground under his feet, and that's why I need your help, too. What kind of help, though? Sigismund has a massive army, and Rosenberg, Burghoff, and Prague are behind him. Do you have an army you could face him with? But that's not what I mean at all. There's been a revolt against Sigismund in Hungary. <laughs> efforts, and now he'll have to choose whether he wants to gain the Bohemian crown, which is a very risky enterprise, or hold on to the Hungarian one. He can't have both, and there's a tough struggle awaiting him in Hungary. I'm not sure he'll win, and Rosenberg and Burghoff know it too. They're not stupid. If the Bohemian nobility stands together, they will turn. We are men of little consequence, Margrave. Radzig here lost everything because of his alliance with Wenceslas. Sir Divish came within a hair of the same fate. Even Ratte is defenseless against Sigismund and the League of Lords. What's more, Your Grace, King Wenceslas languishes in captivity in Vienna. He can't rule too well from there. And what do you propose? To sit with your arms folded till the Bohemian lands are turned to ashes like scarlets? We have to put a stop to this senseless war. And do you know, sir, what the true position of the League of Lords is? I'm not on the best of terms with them at this moment, so you'll have to ask them yourselves. Yes. Why not? I'll go and visit Burgov at his castle and we'll see what he tells me. <laughs> you know, that's not such a bad idea, young sir. True. Though a little risky. I doubt Burgoff would harm a blue-blooded envoy. And you can find out what he has to say about developments, and what the League of Lords is planning. Then we'll decide what to do next. I'll help you compose a letter to him. I'd like Henry to come with me. Why not? He's proven himself an able investigator, and he'll also be a good bodyguard if anything should happen. And I'll send Sir John here to Gutenberg to be my eyes and ears there. I believe both your reports will help us get a better grip on the situation. When can you set out? Just as soon as I've packed my things. Excellent. Margrave Jobs and I will draft the letter. Get ready, and we'll meet back here. I expect it would be best to write it in your name as Lord of Lipa. Quite so, Margrave. What exactly am I to write? Mm. Oh, what isn't really the issue. The question is how. We need to learn where they stand on liberating the king and ousting Sigismund. If they'll make trouble or join our side, but... But we have to ask in a way that won't leave Sir Capon being run out of the castle with a whip. Exactly. How about writing that you're concerned about current events and that you want to see things settled peaceably, and then ask the opinion of the League of Lords? Very well said, sir. And what they want to do about freeing King Wenceslas? Whether they think liberating King Wenceslas IV might contribute to resolving the dispute? And what they plan to do about the god-awful mess in this country? What steps they envisage taking to end the pillaging of Bohemia by foreign armies? I couldn't have put it better myself. Well, I'd also venture to suggest one more. What is their stance on my... That is, the initiatives of Margrave Jobst of Moravia and a large part of the Bohemian nobility? Whether they plan to take action against them or support their efforts? You read my thoughts, sir. 